In this video, we're talking about the properties of matter. So first, let's talk about what a property is. A property is an observable quality of a substance. It's something we can observe about something and say, yep, that thing has that thing. So there are a couple ways to break down properties and really we get at it by asking ourselves a series of questions. The first question is, is this property determined by changing the identity of the substance? If the answer to that question is no, then we call this a physical property. Physical property can depend on amount. If it does depend on the amount of the substance that's there, for example, if I had two pieces of copper and they were different in size or shape, then those would be examples of extensive physical properties. Mass, which is related to weight, the volume, the amount of space that something takes up, its length or its shape, those are all examples of extensive physical properties. But a property that does not depend on the amount of a substance is an intensive physical property. Things like color, melting and boiling point, and density, those are all properties of a substance that will not change no matter how much or how little of the substance you have. Properties that are determined by changing the identity of the substance chemically, meaning by reacting it with a different substance, those are called chemical properties and these are a little bit more nuanced. Chemical properties speak to the reactivity of a substance. So reactivity with air, acid, base, water, those are really common, but really reactivity with any other chemical is going to be a chemical property for that substance. Now, just as we have chemical and physical properties, we also have chemical and physical changes, which I've discussed in a previous video. Check out this video of a uh, bubble being blown in a really cold environment. You'll see off to the bottom left there, there's some crystallization happening. If you think about this, the liquid of the bubble is just freezing. This is just a phase change. We're not actually changing the chemical makeup of this bubble. If I were to warm this back up, it'd be back to being that same bubble solution that we started with. This is a physical change. Check out this time lapse of a burning candle. Now we're combusting, we're using fire to combust the wax in this candle. And so this is certainly a chemical change because that wax has turned into other substances. So we would classify this certainly as a chemical change. Now, as we go through the year, it's important to know when something's just a physical change or a chemical change. And so here's a list of some evidence of a chemical change that you should look for as you're carrying out reactions. If there's a change in temperature, that's certainly evidence of a chemical change. Some reactions heat up, some reactions cool down. So change in temperature, evidence of a chemical change. A change in color is also evidence of a chemical change. So is giving off an odor, whether it's good or bad. Uh, is evidence of a chemical change. Forming a precipitate. Now, a precipitate is just a solid that we produce from a reaction. Usually it settles to the bottom of the container. Um, if there was no solid to begin with, and at, uh, at the end there is a solid, we call that a precipitate, and it's certainly evidence of a chemical change. This last one's a little tricky because we can, we can get bubbles if we're just boiling something. But formation of bubbles is, is sometimes... Uh, evidence of a gas being produced by a reaction. And so be careful about this. If you're not adding heat to something and if you don't feel there's heat being generated, formation of bubbles is evidence of a chemical change. So properties of matter, they can be physical, they can be chemical. Even if they're physical, they can depend on amount. And so there's a few different types of physical properties. And then of course, there's two different ways to change matter, both physically and chemically. Thank you.